Hi and welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our series on unpacking 2020's paper two, which was the complex paper from Queensland's external exams. In this video, we're gonna look at question four, which is a question on de-seasonalizing data. So let's read the question, it was worth five marks. The following data shows the profits per quarter for a company for the last two years. De-seasonalize the data and plot this on the same set of axes as the original data in the graph on the next page. Now don't worry about the graph just yet, we'll get to that shortly, but firstly we're interested in de-seasonalizing the data, that is our key word here. Now de-seasonalizing is not difficult, it's just tedious, and that's why it's on the complex paper. It's not complex because it's hard, it's complex because there's a lot of steps that you need to remember. And if you can remember the steps, and there's really only four of them, it just means you've got to apply those four steps to a lot of different data points but if you can remember the four steps you'll be all right so let's have a look at step number one we've got to find the average for each year so let's start with the first year 2018 and remember how to find the average we do the sum of all the values and divide it by how many values there are so that's going to give us the mean is going to be 100 for the year 2018 we then need to reapply that to 2019 and do the same thing again, calculate our means. It's a good idea to show you're working for these. I'm not sure how much the working went towards um, your solution, but in this case, if you got both means correct, you got a single mark. So um, there's not a lot of marks actually associated with this question. And given how much work there is, I'm guessing that there weren't really marks associated with the working as such. It was more just for finding the correct answer. However, if you're doing this kind of question at school or in a future exam, you don't know whether they're going to allocate marks for working. So it's always a good idea to at least have a sample calculation. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. So that's our first step. We've found the average for each year. Now we need to take each value from a particular year. So for 2018, we'll divide those four data points by the average for 2018, and then we'll repeat with 2019. So firstly, we're going to show a sample calculation. It's a good idea to actually write this is a sample calculation. And then you're going to take that profit and divide it by the average, which is 64 divided by 100 gives you 0.64. And you're going to put that into the table. So you're going to need to actually build on the table as you go. It's going to get more columns and where you know you're on the right track. We're going to simply repeat that now for the rest of our data points. Now for 2019, however, we're doing 87 divided by 150, not 100. We take the profit for the year and divide it by its corresponding yearly average. We get a mark for doing um, that particular column there. So all of those calculations was worth a single mark. Okay, we're up to step three. Now we're going to calculate the seasonal indices. It's important that you understand that that's what we're actually doing here. To do that, we're going to be using these two data points and we're going to be taking the average of those. So quarter one for year um, 2018, quarter one year 2019, we add them together and divide by two. So we're going to show that again with a sample calculation and we get a seasonal index for um, the first quarter is going to be 0.61 and we put that into the next column for both of those quarters and then we repeat for quarters two three and four so quarter two will be adding 0.98 to 1.04 and dividing by two quarter three will do 1.16 plus 1.2 divided by two and then quarter four will do 1.22 and divided by one point uh, and add 1.1 and divide it by two. And then that gives us our third mark. So that's also quite important um, for us to show that sample calculation, but to know what we're doing with the process. And we are almost there. Step four, we're now gonna take that original figure and we're gonna divide it by the seasonal index that then has de-seasonalized the data. So done it in four steps. So once again, we're gonna take that a profit um, which was 64, divide it by 0.61 with our set calculation, and we'll get deseasonalized data of 104.92. Repeat that process all the way down, and you get your next mark, which was um, for deseasonalizing the data. Now, remember our original question um, wasn't just to deseasonalize the data, we had to graph as well. So we'll get onto that in one moment. But it's really important that you know how to round to one or two decimal places correctly. I often find students come undone in this particular section because they don't round correctly. So do be sure that you are rounding in the appropriate way. Now let's go back to the original question. It wants us to plot this information on the same set of axes as the original data. So we're going to be taking that that column profit in thousands and plotting that on the graph and then plotting the deseasonalized data against it. Now, 
the QCAA very kindly on their exam paper saved some time for students and they actually already graphed the original data. You can see that there with the black line. So we now need to take the data we've deseasonalized and put that on the same set of axes. So we're going to be adding the first point, which is 104.92. And then we're going to slowly add each of these points that we've graphed into our graphing paper. And there we are. Now, you may actually be asked to comment on the difference between the two graphs. Now, if you were, you weren't actually asked to do that in this question, but if you were asked to do that, you need to recognize that the process of deseasonalizing is all about smoothing our data so that we can see actual trends that are taking place. Okay, so let's quickly summarize where all those marks came from. Step one was determining the yearly average. Step two, determining the profit divided by the yearly average. Step three, calculating the seasonal indices. It's important that you know that that's what they are. And step four was deseasonalizing those values and then accurately plot plotting them. A lot of work for not a lot of marks. Okay, well, that's all we have time for. I'd just like to say a very quick shout out to all of our new subscribers and our old ones as well. Thank you so much for joining me here. You make this job really, really worthwhile. And I'd like to say, don't forget to hit that um, notifications button so you'll know when all new videos are coming out. And please do like the video if it was helpful to you. Also, you can follow us now on Facebook and Instagram. We've got competitions, we've got memes, we've got interesting information. And I'd also like to let you know that you can contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com if you have any questions. That's the best place to do it. Not necessarily in the comments. It does get a little bit lost after a while. But if you send me an email, I am very, very quick to respond. Well, thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope this was really helpful to you. I'm Natalie McClutchy and you've been watching McClutchy Maths.